Now that's the stuff. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Chris Reeve Knives Large and Cozy. I've been carrying this knife for over a year now and I'm ready to give you guys my full impressions. What is so good about this knife? What's not so good about it? And is it worth the $550? That's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Let's get it. Reach me from my winter hell. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Everyday Minimalist. My name is Brandon and I hope you're having a fantastic day. As I stated in the intro of this video, we're gonna be talking about the Chris Reeve Large and Cozy today. Now guys, I'll be completely honest with you. I've been postponing this review just because I wanted to see how this thing would hold up after a year's worth of use. And now I can confidently say that I will give you guys a review here in 2022 and talk about what this thing is all about. Now Chris Reeve knives have a ton of flack in the knife communities. Whether a person absolutely loves them and thinks that they're the best or if you're someone that absolutely hates it I will give you guys the point of view from both ends in this video I've talked about it in previous reviews on the Sabenzas and we'll talk about it in this review for the Nkosi we're gonna be talking about the negatives the positives what this thing is all about and then what my overall impressions are on it but first off let's go ahead and give you guys the variant that I went with so this is gonna be the Tonto version with s35 VN blade steel I've also got the natural micarta inlays and it's the large version I haven't modified it at all, and this has never hit a sharpening block whatsoever. To be completely transparent with you guys, this is not a beater knife for me. It's actually in the upper echelon of my collection, but I didn't treat this knife as a safe queen either. I did go ahead and use it. You know, it opens up packages, cuts zip ties. It's just not a beater knife. Like I'm not gonna baton things with it. I've got like my Benchmade Mini Adamus and my Fix Adamus to do that with. But let's go ahead and show you guys a quick size comparison between the two knives. So up here, we've got the Inco CPM two they're going to be roughly the same size in total length and then when you go to conceal them let's show you guys this as well the pm2 is going to be quite a bit bigger the funny thing is the pm2 is going to be lighter than the large and cozy and that's just due to the fact that this thing is going to be a lot more solid let's show you guys these two next to each other we've got the benchmade bug out and the chris reeve large and cozy yeah this thing is going to be quite a bit bigger in uh, pretty much all dimensions as you can tell it's going to be a little bit longer a little bit thicker in total width via the handle now that we've got these size comparisons put away, if you guys are interested in seeing the full specifications of this knife, I'll be leaving that in the description below so you can check that out at any time in this video. But let's go ahead and talk about why Chris Reeve knives have so much flack within the knife communities. Whether it be the large and cozy, the small and cozy, the small Sabenza, large Sabenza, the Umnamzan, there's just a lot of controversy that this knife company has produced. So let's just start out by looking at a perspective of someone that doesn't like Chris Reeve knives and think that they're completely overpriced. I can totally see it from that point of view as well. Basically, these knives are going to start at like $375 at the bottom tier and they range upwards from there. I think I saw like a $1,200 version of a Sabenza or something like that. If you guys want to correct me, let me know. But essentially, these things are very expensive. They're not cheap whatsoever. And the customer that they are catering towards is going to be that hard user, someone that's going to really beat down on their knives. They use phosphor bronze washers and that's really good for like a user type of knife. But if we're looking at it nowadays, um, bearings have been really good and you get a really nice satisfying action. But again, they're going to be trying to cater to the customer that is going to be a hard user. So, I mean, I guess that works 100%. But when people are looking at it, you know, everyone's kind of looking at the nitty gritty details like, hey, does it have really nice bearings in there? Is that a frame lock? What type of materials are you using? And that is one of the biggest things. That would be the blade material. So this one is an S35 VN Large and Cozy. And that's kind of a problem, guys. Basically, you're paying $550 to $600 for S35 VN blade steel. A lot of people that hate on the Chris Reeve brand know that, you know, why would you pay that sort of money with such a low end steel, especially here in 2022? I totally see it from that point of view as well. Like, for example, the Benchmade Mini Adamus, they're using CPM crewwear steel in a knife that's about $200. 
you can literally buy three of those for the price of one of these. And then on top of that, you're looking at a premium super steel versus S35VN. S35VN is considered still kind of like a premium steel, but it's not up there with like Crewwear 20CV or M390. And when you're looking at a knife, you want to get something that's going to be really nice and premium. You know, the blade is the most important part and whatever it's made out of. S35VN is starting to get really dated. You can purchase a Wii Banter for like 110 bucks and get the same type of steel. So that's kind of where a lot of people are hating on Chris Reeve knives. They're overcharging. They're not innovating as much. But let's talk about the positives and why people absolutely love the Chris Reeve knives. And Chris Reeve is one of the engineers that helped develop CPM S35VN. Basically, if we're looking at a point of view from someone that absolutely adores Chris Reeve knives, they're okay with S35VN. And now you can get one, you know, with S45VN. It does the job. It's really easy to strop and sharpen because it's considered a soft steel. And honestly, s 35 S45 VN steels are going to be able to do anything that you need it to do unless you're going to be someone that's like in the military, for example, or if you're working on a farm, if you're in construction and that sort of thing. Even then, it should be able to hold up. The next thing is going to be the overall design of the Nkosi. Um, this one specifically looks super clean in my opinion. That's why I decided to go with this variant specifically. And there's really not a lot of knives that look similar to the Sabenza or the Nkosi. A lot of people see Chris Reeve knives as a grail knife as well, just because of its minimalistic design. It just looks super clean. There's not a lot going on. And this is even a more hopped up version with micarta inlays. And another huge perk of why people like this knife is because they're super collectible. They're not insanely mass manufactured like brands such as Benchmade or Spyderco. So they're a little bit harder to get. Oftentimes you will have to hunt one down and once you actually get it, it feels like you've accomplished something. And I really do dig that as well. But that's just to give you guys both sides of the spectrum. Now let's just go ahead and dive into my overall impressions. What are the negatives of this knife so far? The very first negative I had for this knife is going to be the jimping here on top of the blade spine. It's a little bit too sharp for my liking. So when I do go to choke up, it's a little bit too rough on the hands. But if they just went a little bit lighter, such as like the Sabenza 31s, I really like the Sabenza 31s jimping here. It's a lot thinner. It's a lot easier to grip and it's not as rough on the hands. Now, the next thing that I had a huge gripe with is going to be the edge retention. I know this is S35VN blade steel, but I honestly have to strop this thing very often. Probably like after four or five days of use, this thing will have to get strops. Now, I don't want to put my own edge on there just because I don't trust myself. I may send it out to someone to get an aftermarket edge on there, but so far after usage, it's just not able to hold up with a lot of use. It may just be the disadvantages of having a soft steel like S35VN like I just mentioned. If I'm going to spend, you know, five to six hundred dollars on it. I want something that's going to have really good edge retention so I'm not having to constantly strop it. My last gripe for this knife is going to be uh, the finish that they did with the scales. Um, it just really attracts a lot of scratches very often and again I'm paying five to six hundred dollars for a knife. I want it to be more robust than not. For example on my like Hindera XM18 that thing does not really show any snail trails or anything like that no matter how many times I put it in my pocket. But that's not a huge deal. A lot of times if you do add some scratches on it it's going to look like a more used knife and it gives it a little bit more character. Onto the positives. This thing is absolutely fantastic when it comes to ergonomics. It fits in the hand really well. Again, the only grip I've got is the jimping. Aside from that, it fits really well. No hot spots or anything like that. Insanely comfortable and it's really easy to choke up and get your cuts in precisely. The next thing on the list would be the hardware that they decided to go with. This is going to be different from a lot of the knives I've handled, probably like 95% of them. They utilized hex or Allen key hardware. That's going to be a lot more accessible than like, for example, T6, T8, T10 bits. So just taking apart the knife was very simplistic and easy. The last positive I have for this knife is its ability to retain its value. Chris Reeve knives do not drop that much on the secondhand market. That's a huge plus just because if I ever do want to sell any of my Chris Reeve knives or the Nkosi, for example, I'll be able to get my money back for it. Of course, I didn't buy this one, so I will never sell it. It was a gift from my girlfriend, but you guys kind of get the gist if I ever wanted to sell my Sabenza 31 or any other Chris Reeve models that enter my collection, it's going to be really easy to just get rid of them and then swap it out with a different knife. So what are my overall conclusions? Chris Reeve knives do cater to a specific niche. You can hate on them all you want, but they're always going to be selling their knives. I think the Nkosi is a good knife, but there is room for improvement. And I think here within the next few years, we'll probably see additional changes. Hopefully, I hope they do it. Tim Reeve, if you're watching this, 
do it, man. Well, yeah, I mean, they did go for S45 VN blade steel with the newer 21 and 22 models. And this is a knife that is gonna be a staple in my collection. It's gonna be in it forever. Is it worth the 500 to $550? I don't know guys, like honestly, if it was me, it just depends on how much I have saved up, um, how much you actually like the design of the Nkosi. And maybe we should do like a Sabenza versus Nkosi type of video. If you guys wanna see that, let me know in the comments section below. Aside from that guys, thank you so much for spending your time with me today and we'll catch you all on the next one. Peace out.